Welcome to China Insider. Today we have uh, two topics, so I didn't really prepare the script for it. I'm just going to do the uh, do the topics with uh, my my screen so that we can sort of analyze the information to uh, to start. And uh, the first topic will be an update to the London St Pancras CCP nationalists. And uh, you know, as everybody's trying to kind of move on now, they're still stuck in that original event. And uh, one of them has released a video, so we'll go over that. And then the second part, if you want to skip to this time code right here, uh, it will take you to the Evergrande real estate crisis in China. So if you want to watch either of them or skip ahead, feel free to do so. And I'll leave the time code in the description as well. So she has come out with a new video, and this one was released on the Chinese social media called Little Red Book. And uh, this is where she once again plays the victim and claims that Brandon Kavanaugh is the person that's really bad. And apparently that Brandon Kavanaugh is the reason why the situation is blowing over. And there, obviously, you know, this is a Chinese social media app, so the viewership is targeted for domestic Chinese people. And he's trying, to, she's trying to appeal to them as if she is the victim. Now, clearly, this has backfired because even in China, a lot of them don't really. They're criticizing this group of um, CCP nationalists as uh, you know for overreacting on something so so so. Uh, bizarre, right? Just the way their attitudes, their actions, their words, you know, that one guy that was shouting. So anyways, I thought we should analyze this three minute video and find out what she's trying to tell the Chinese people. Uh, even though the whole truth has been repeatedly talked about all, you know, all through last week. So I'm not going to spend time on that because everybody knows what exactly happened. And Dr. K, Brandon Kavanaugh is clearly in the right. And I mean, his tone, his manners, and just the reactions, even I think some of the really funny interactions he had against the uh, CCP thugs, I thought was very appropriate. But the reason why they're continuing to do this, again, just to generate some level of sympathy within the Chinese uh, social media to appear like they're the ones who are being victimized. So let's, uh, let's watch this. <laughs> She shouldn't have done this to ruin the image, but she's not apologizing to everyone else. She's actually apologizing to the people in China. Um, and then she goes on to say that, oh, you know, I, I, I was told to speak the truth. I shouldn't be afraid, but, you know, I, I got scared, blah, blah, blah. She's making it sound like she's the one that's actually being victimized. And then she goes on to say that, oh, why would somebody like Dr. K would... 200 million, uh, sorry, 2 million subscribers, you know, this, this famous person uh, who apparently uses virality and just, you know, these contentious conflict points to generate viewership. Why is everyone calling him a pianist? Well, I mean, if you've been following Dr. K for a while, you understand that before this incident, his focus of the channel was really about music. It was about spontaneous interactions with the crowd in a public setting with the piano. And if you ever watch more than one of his videos, you realize that sometimes these type of things happen in public, uh, whether for malicious reasons or not. Some, you know, whether that's like security guards, mall cops, or anybody else that comes and, you know, they, they try to get him to leave or whatnot. His reactions is always very non-confrontational. Um, so I really don't understand where this feeling that they're trying to create. The, the image of an aggressor in Dr. K comes from. But, you know, they always twist and bend reality. And uh, so let's keep watching it. Okay, so here she's basically talking about how, uh, you know, I'm trying so hard, I'm a Chinese person living abroad, I'm, I'm, even though I'm not a, a guy, 
I'm still trying really hard. My aspirations is, uh, you know, my driving force to be a hardworking person. And how, why are they painting me as this, you know, British person? Blah 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 blah. And uh, so the irony here is that Meng Yi Liu, this lady here, she actually she has a British boyfriend. So everybody's calling her, saying that she's in one hand she has the foreign gun, in the other hand she has the CCP national flag. So it's like, are you hypocritical or something? What are you trying to do? Are you really like? Here's the thing I have about this whole nationalism uh, situation, right? If you really think you're preaching what you believe in, which is CCP nationalism, then don't do this outside of China. But do this in China if that's what you think is the proper way of life, so to speak.、Uh, but if you're already living in the UK or anywhere else, that's you know. There's freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of association, the rights to protest, the rights to、uh, enjoy life as humans should do. Then do not be hypocritical and still speak on behalf of the CCP, and then come out and play the victim card because that doesn't work. Here's the reason why. Like I said in my previous videos, the stuff that you're talking about right now, can you physically do that inside China's border boundaries? And face no consequences. No, the answer is clearly a no. Because if you said the same things that you just said in this video in China about the Chinese government,、uh, or you know, in in that sense, the your demise would be like you're you're either disappeared or you get sentenced to jail or you know you're you're publicly outlawed, socially outlawed. In fact, the social credit system,、uh, all of these. Are the consequences you will face? But if you do that in the UK, what's going to happen? You make a video, everyone laughs at you, and then they move on. Nobody is going. The, the the federal government of the United Kingdom is not going to come for you, right? That's the difference here. And it's it's such an ironic logic that these people put out because their physical bodies are in a free country, and they're able to exercise these rights, and yet they still speak on behalf of a genocide regime. And an authoritarian, dictatorial regime, in fact,、um, but they don't realize this, right? This is this is not something that is processed in the brains because they've been propagandized. The CCP has done so much work to brainwash people like them. Anyways, let's continue. 当然，我也承认我的英语表达不够地道。虽然我在英国工作生活多年，但我不能理解的是，就像上一代人们会提醒你普通话发音不够标准，乐意帮你纠正一样，为什么面对 please thanks 客客气气的沟通，就因为英文沟通的表达习意，被对方指张母语优势，不直接回答我的问题，把我绕入语言陷阱，用反复套路他人的 no a n o u t 设套制造对立，进而引发冲突。Okay, so she basically says that she blames Dr. K for using. English as a language trap, as a grammar trap, to confuse her and to lead her to、uh, appear like she is,、uh, you know, the aggressive one. Now, if you watch the original live stream, you notice that she was politely,、uh, Dr. K and her, they were both having a civil interaction to talk about the the so-called not allowed or non-disclosure part, right? But you shouldn't be blaming Dr. K for the aftermath because guess who was the one that actually escalated the situation? It was your good old friend Newton Lung. Okay. Now speaking of Newton Lung, I just learned about this today. I'm not sure how long this has been happening, but、um, Newton has done something funny. He has on his Instagram. I just learned about this. Started to sell shirts with、uh, the prints of "Don't touch her" on them. Now, how shameless do you have to be to do this?、Um, okay. So if you click into his Shopify page, you can actually get this in in both a white tee as well as in a black tee. Okay,、uh, and then the reason why I know this is his site is because if you click on this Instagram icon at the bottom of it, you can actually go back, and it will show you Newton's page again. Wow, how convenient! Imagine you're trying, you're, you're literally trying to profit off of like your own doings. That's hilarious. But anyways, just sidetracked a little bit. But I thought that was funny because this person here is blaming Dr. K when in fact. The person that caused this thing to blow up was your friend. Do not touch her, Mister. Do not touch her. Right? Okay. So, anyway, so she then goes on to talk about how, oh, this isn't my problem. I 一无是处的就自取
。在此，我也承认我不是专业的法律人士，虽然我并没有主张超出个人范畴的权利，但我不能理解的是，就像每个人都有隐私权一样，且对方是获利性质的商业直播场景下，在对方多次把镜头转向我们，我只是请求对方如果不小心拍到我们的 ，Did you film us in your camera？ 是否可以把我们的画面马赛克掉或者删掉？就变成了他们口中我用中国的肖像保护权要求英国人遵守。最后我还想说，谁都想要体面得体，但他不能成为别人欺负我们的枷锁。我们常说，人敬我一尺，我敬人一丈。尊重和以礼相待是谈成功的前提。我相信大家无论何时何地，哪怕是在海外，当你碰到类似我们这种已经以貌拒绝邀请，却遭受对方 British girl is more fun 调侃的时候，明知我们是中国人，依然对着镜头直播说 There are a lot of Japanese people here. We're here with Japanese TV crew filming about public p a n So she again talks about how Dr. K apparently confused them with the Japanese TV crew. Now, if you go on to Brendan Kavanaugh's page, he actually made a video about this, saying how he was sincerely、uh, sorry for. Uh, mixing and confusing the two because they had been prior in that same location, so they thought that the, this group of people were also Japanese.、Um, and so, for her to continue to say that, this is again just trying to force a racial point onto apparently that Dr. K is racist because he keeps confusing them with the Japanese.、And、if you watch the video again, right, everybody can see that first in the first part of the video, which wasn't in the live stream. Uh, they thought they were they were Japanese, but later on, he was told by the producer friend who works for the Japanese TV crew that this group is Chinese. From that point on, he no longer says that they're Chinese.、Uh, they're Japanese. They said he he calls them Chinese, and and he says they're are they from China. So once he learned who they are, that whole racist against Chinese Japanese thing no longer is a、uh, talking point. So I don't know why she keeps saying that, but again, you know, twisting the reality. 对方百般刁难，故意碰瓷，甚至未经允许来触摸我们的时候，在保障人身安全的前提下，都能够从容反击。更何况，保护女性 ，Don't touch her， 不是他们口中的丢人现眼。总之，这个事情我处理的确实没有那么好，让大家失望了。大家基于事实、公正合理的批评和质疑，我都接受。我也相信理性对话和尊重多元文化是解决任何争议的前提。我也请求所有关心此事的朋友客观理性评价，勿让偏见和误会进一步加剧矛盾。谢谢大家。All right, so basically in this video,、um, which she originally had another one, but she deleted that. Now she posted this. The language, if you watch the video, I'll link it in the description so you can check it out. Is more professional. Is it, it's more、uh, apologetic. I think. She probably had somebody who knows a little bit about public relations, PR work, to help her write this.、Uh, it comes with I don't know if the subtitles were added by herself or by somebody else, but the translations in both English and Chinese seem to mean、uh, similar tones and manners. In that she is sorry, apparently for representing or misrepresenting the nationalist feelings of the Chinese people. And、uh, in my view, okay, out of all these. CCP nationalists. I think the one that actually needs to come out and apologize is Newton Long, our Mr. Do Not Touch Her here. But、uh, clearly, he's too busy profiting off of the popularity、uh, and the attention. And this also comes after this lady here. She said she's being like, you know, threatened. She's fearing for her life. Now, obviously, people should probably,、uh, you know, like she she's still a person, right? Even if she stands on the wrong side. She like you shouldn't be threatening her life, but at the same time, she's the one that I don't know why she keeps doing this. You know, just let the just let it die down, right? You're done. Just just let it go.、Uh, but she's been like kind of crying out for help, saying that she hasn't left her house in a few days.、Uh, blah 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 blah. But、um, look, if it was really about this like internet bullying situation, I think you should actually consider that. You know. Closing down your Instagram page, maybe shutting down your Facebook or whatnot. Because if we're talking about the image right situation, right, you're posting all these things yourself online, and、uh, then going back and saying that oh, all my information is publicly available. It's being hijacked. It's being used against me.、Uh, it's called protecting your online privacy, and you should probably do that now.、Um, another thing is right. I, these people, they're brainwashed. It's pretty sad. And but at the end of the day, you have to realize that what they're trying to do now, after the initial situation, 
isn't just about apologizing for their behaviors, but they're actually trying to use this for more attention, in, especially in the mainland. And that's where she operates, whether that's her tutoring service, I'm talking specifically about this girl, or her uh, like attention and uh, wanting to be an influencer, attention grabbing scenarios. What she's doing is she's actually using the popularity of the event itself to make herself more popular by whether playing as a victim or playing as somebody who is apparently fighting against inequality or fighting for feminism, whoever the, whatever the term is, clearly they don't want this situation to die down. Um, and so anyways, I just thought it was interesting because in my opinion, this whole event should have been you know, concluded uh, after Dr. Kate you know, came out with the Winnie the Pooh toys and whatnot, but I, why are they still up to this? Uh, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe there's some forces behind her who says we have to win the narrative of, uh, campaign against Dr. K. And so we'll continue to put out. Anyways, that's a little bit of the update.